Hi, in this video we are going to go over the techniques I teach for inserting gores. This was a requested video, and it's a very popular subject when I teach my geometric construction class and my class on cohardies. As one looks through examples of extant garments with center and back gores in them, these are usually inserted into the body panel that is one piece. The front and the back panels are not divided into two, and so they do not have a center seam to aid in the insertion of the gore. This is a question I get asked a lot. How to easily insert a gore without the aid of a center seam? The following technique was taught to me long ago by my Laurel, and I have found it the easiest way to do it. I have been teaching it this way for many years. It's not the only way to do it, but this method is what I like and prefer. It also works whether hand sewing or machine sewing. For the speed of this demo, I will be using a machine. Now, what first thing you notice when you look at the gore here is that I do have the seam allowance cut into the width of the top of the gore, so it's not a point, it's actually a trapezoid. And not only do I have the width seam allowance, there's also extra added in there for the top of the gores so that I can fold it over. The very first thing I like to do is lay out the center line that I'm going to put the gore, uh, place the gore. Now what's very important here is I do not cut the center line once I draw it. Uh, cutting the center line is later in the process after I get one seam attaching the gore to the fabric. So here you can see me that I am laying out the center line. And it's approximate on this. I'm not being too careful because this is just a demo piece here. Now you can see here I am using a water soluble marker. It does work great on cotton that I have found. I haven't done it on too many other fabrics yet. I usually just use a piece of chalk. I was hoping that this would show up better. At this point, now that I have the center line drawn, I'm going to mark where I want the top of the gore to be. If you notice, I'm not putting it at the exact top of the gore. I'm putting it down the seam allowance amount. Now I'm placing the gore up against the edge of the center line. The center line becomes the cut edge of the body once we get to the point that we cut apart the body open for the gore. But right now, we're placing the edge of the gore along that center line that I drew. And you can see that I'm going to start pinning it in here. As we get to the top, you notice that I'm not pinning in exactly at the top. I'm about two and a half to three inches from the top and what I'm doing here is I'm checking to see that I can ease the gore over and I'll explain that in a bit why we want to do that. Now I chose this fabric and it's a cotton flannel because it has on the right side of the fabric it has a printed uh, pattern on the wrong side of the pattern it is just white and so you can see that I've laid the right side of the gore onto the right side of the body panel, leaving the wrong side of the gore visible. Uh, so that's in case you have a direction of the fabric or if you have a pattern on the fabric and a right side and a wrong side, you can make sure that you insert your gore correctly. Now, as I mentioned earlier, that center line is the cut line on the body. So when I sew the gore onto the body, I want to sew away from the center line by my seam allowance, attaching the gore to the body. Now I'm going to continue to sew up to that point of where I have the last pin, and then I'm going to start easing over. The goal is to get the end of the gore minus the seam allowance from the top to fall onto the center line where I had marked the top of the gore insertion. So 
there's going to be more seam allowance on the gore than there is on the body because I want to finish that seam on that center line. And you can see that I'm slowly approaching there and I'm just easing it over. And then here we have a the one side attached. You can kind of see here how there's more seam allowance there at the very end and the looseness of there. It is at this point that I cut the center line. And as I get to the top, I'll hold the uh, seam allowance of the gore out of the way, cut underneath it, and I'll cut right up towards where I uh, finish sewing on uh, the gore. And that's where I'm hoping that my center of my gore matches the center line in the mark that I wanted to end there. At this point, I go ahead and tuck the uh, seam allowance underneath, turn turned it over, and now you again have to kind of ease the very top of the gore like the other side, and you want to pin that in. And just like on the other side, you'll get to it where here I'll go ahead and pin the bottom, and then I'll just ease it all out so that my uh, two sides match up of my other side of my gore and my other side of the body panel. So at this point, I'm going to start sewing and I am going to start my stitch on the other side where I finished the first seam of the, on the gore. So where I ended, I will now start sewing and I'll sew, do, uh, sew down the seam allowance on the other side. Here we go ahead and look at what we've accomplished. And you can see that the gore is setting in very nice into the uh, body panel there. We'll flip it over here and we'll look at the other side. And you can see how I have a uh, seam allowance on all three sides on the two on the two sides and then along the top there's enough seam allowance here and I'm actually going to uh, uh, flat fell the seam here now obviously if this was an actual garment I would at this point go out to the ironing board and press the seam open but for the demo here I'm just hand pressing it lightly and I'm just folding my seam allowance making sure that I have no uh, uh, salvage showing where where I'm flat felling and I'm just pinning this part the rest I'm just gonna freehand uh, fold it now I'm gonna speed this process up so you don't have to sit here as I flat fell the whole thing The one comment that I will make here is a technique I like to do for flat felling on a sewing machine is that I will increase I, I will increase the stitch length. I will make less stitches per inch since I'm not really trying to make a structural stitch here. Really, I'm trying to make it a holding down my flat fell, but also a decorative stitch so that as a distance it kind of looks like a hand sewn garment. Uh, usually. It's a gathering stitch size, but in this method, it makes a very nice effect and from a distance looks really good. 
And again, it's pr these little steps that you can take even on a machine sewn garment that at a distance doesn't look like it's necessarily machine sewn. So here we're going to look at our finished process, our finished uh, gore here as I try to flatten a uh, panel that has a gore into it, which means I can no longer flatten it, but I'm trying to get it there so you can see how nicely the gore lays in, and then you can see the finished side on the other side. This is a method that with some practice starts becoming very fast. It's a very easy to do. The main work on it took me hardly any time at all. And I would almost argue that I can insert a gore with practice just as fast as if I would cut the panel into two and use a center seam so I didn't have to insert the gore into a solid panel piece. If you have any questions, please let me know. I'll try to get some better uh, pictures and uh, maybe add them into the video at some date. But hopefully this is enough to get to people to wrap their mind around how to insert a gore into a body panel.